Hi guys, I'm Sean, this is Alyssa, Gus is in, in our hearts, hearts. and this, this is Internet, Internet Rabbit Hole, Hole Daily! Daily. Uh, and this episode is brought to you by Pratik Dio, one of our very generous donators. We appreciate it a whole lot. Thank you so much, And uh, they wanted us to check out a certain video here. So mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. It's called, Is India's ISRO the most successful space agency after NASA? This one seems quite interesting. I'm excited. I'm a big fan of space excited. stuff. Hey, you know, welcome back, I'm Lai. Oh, here we go. On this channel, I've talked a lot about technology and business space companies. I've talked about national agencies like NASA, ESA, and Roscosmos. I've also talked about private companies like SpaceX, SpaceX. and Rocket Lab. <laughs> One entity I've refrained to talk about is ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, simply because ah. it's really hard to pigeonhole ISRO. Yes, it is a traditional national agency, much like NASA of the United States, but it's also at the same time extremely cost conscious and result oriented like a startup. Its launch price is almost as competitive as SpaceX. Interesting. So let's talk about it today. Where does ISRO really fit in and what makes it so special? First of all, it is not fair to compare ISRO with other space agencies because ISRO has never possessed the ambitions or the fundings like the other space agencies. NASA's budget each year is $18 billion, $7 billion oh. for European Space Agency, $3 billion for the Chinese and the mm -hmm. Russians. Mm -hmm. ISRO's budget each year is only $1.7 billion. Oh, Think wow. about it. With $285 billion cash reserve, Apple could have funded ISRO with cash for 167 years. That is how little Ooh. ISRO spends every year, and that is why comparing ISRO with NASA wouldn't be fair. However, this is not to say that ISRO has not achieved mm -hmm. extraordinary results. It has. Two of the most successful launches of ISRO is the PSLV C-37 in 2017 and the Mangoyan in 2013. PSLV C-37 until this day holds the record for launching the most satellites in a single rocket and Mangoyan successfully... It's a way to do it? ISRO 104 in one? ...country to orbit Mars, even before the Chinese. But none of the aforementioned achievements comes close to what ISRO has spent for both missions around 70 million dollars each this i think reflects the core philosophy of isro which is to be ambitious yeah i was gonna say i think the suggestion there is that 70 million dollars is a steal when it comes to where it might have been <laughs> over like a, a lot, billion dollars for uh, other mm -hmm. space agencies i'm cost effective or, or nasa in perhaps. the 1960s the soviet union and the united states competed fiercely in the space industry, which eventually accelerated the collapse of the Soviet Union. And now the Chinese are catching up with the Americans. Yeah. Compete with NASA this time. Yeah, the Chinese are launching a their own space station right now. And they're they're launching mm. the different parts. And then they're going to be sort of put together up there. Uh, fascinating mm. times. But the Chinese are not going to be anyone else's lackey either. Therefore, while other space agencies compete to make the most powerful rockets in the world, ISRO never seemed to care about that. Just look at the evolution of its rocket launchers. They're all humbly named satellite launch vehicles. Different mm. variations indicated by the first letter represent different orbit. PSLV for polar synchronous orbit and GSLV for geosynchronous orbit. This is the first clue of how pragmatic ISRO is. The second clue is in its vehicle design. If you take a closer look at ISRO's rocket evolution, it looks almost like SpaceX. The only difference is that ISRO has a more stable financial support from the Indian government and SpaceX had none. But in terms of the approach to design launch vehicles, both organizations are very similar. SLV and ASLV was initiated in the 1980s and ASLV's capability is similar to that of Falcon 1. The three versions of PSLVs have similar capabilities comparing to early versions of Falcon 9, and the GSLV has capabilities somewhat catching on to Falcon 9 Block 5. None of them could be classified as... Oh, it's interesting because now, of course, SpaceX has big uh, ha has just won a big contract with the American government. So they are mm. a private organization, but they're now getting some, some dollars. Uh, Elon oh, okay. Musk has done well for himself. Mm -hmm. For heavy lift launch vehicle like Falcon Heavy and Saturn V, but they're all super reliable and most importantly, very cost effective. 
What's more impressive about the evolution of ISRO's launch vehicles is their adaptability. Take PSLV as an example. It has three versions, PSLV CA, which stands for Core Alone, Standard PSLV, and PSLV XL. But all of them focus on polar synchronous orbit, which is around 600 kilometers altitude. Customers can choose which variations of vehicles to use based on the size of the satellite. This is the beauty of a cost-effective launcher. Furthermore, because of its focus on cost-effectiveness, ISRO also has to come up with brilliant engineering solutions to the problems it faces. One famous example is its experimental mission to Mars. On top of being the only successful Mars mission on the first try, ISRO really? had to perform six mm -hmm. orbit raising maneuvers right. over three weeks before heading to Mars. Because the vehicle does not have enough power like the Falcon Heavy to send satellites directly to Mars, it slowly raises the satellite's orbit before injecting it successfully to a heliocentric orbit. To Smart. Mars. The engineering and the problem solving behind it is truly amazing. Using this gravity, I, I guess, to their own. The uh, sense of so they just send this piece of metal to Mars. I like guess that's a way of putting it, yeah. From Earth. Yeah, isn't that amazing? They just, like, control it. Uh, I think it's it all has to be, all of those calculations have to be done, as far as I know, on ground and, and sort of programmed in. And then you but sort do of they have send to, it back? No, no. Can I don't they? believe so. I do don't they believe know so. how to? I don't believe anyone's done that yet. They, do they not know how? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they have. I, so I'm they're ignorant. just sending these things in orbit, just being like... Well, you can, you can send things uh, to Mars and, and you can take pictures and you can take soil samples and analyze those on, on and then, the yeah. robot and stuff. And then they just <laughs> keep it there? I think so. I don't know that they have the technology yet to mm. uh, retrieve something from Mars. You guys will have to let us know. Uh, you, you know more than we do, uh, no doubt. Thorough success. As the founding father of ISRO, Vikram, used to say... There are some who question the relevance of space activities in the developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose. We do not have the fantasy of competing with the economically advanced nations in the exploration of the moon or the planets or manned space flight. But we are convinced that if we are to play a meaningful role nationally and in the community of nations, we must be second to none in the applications of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. I think this is the key to understand what ISRO stands for and how it differs from other space agencies and companies. This is also why I said at the beginning, it is really hard to pigeonhole ISRO. It didn't have the fundings that NASA had, it didn't have the startup mindset and institution that SpaceX had, but none of this stopped ISRO from doing how something beautiful. extraordinary. This just come to show how important passion and dedication is for any organization. You know, talking about ISRO makes me really happy because it's clearly made out of people who are passionate, dedicated, and above all, an institution that encourages it. Looking forward into the future, I think ISRO will continue to do great things. It's setting out to perform its first manned mission in 2022. I'd say good luck to ISRO. It's first Before I publish this manned video, mission. one of my mission? viewers sent me this uh -huh. picture. Can you believe it? In ah. the early days, engineers of ISRO had to rocket send bike. rocket parts with their bicycles what? to assemble them for testing. This hmm. is the situation they had to deal with every single day. They don't have a lot of resources. What they do have is passion and dedication. They would put a rocket on their bike well, and then I, go f really fast? No, no, I think they're just trapped. They're, they just put it on there for storage purposes. Yeah, so they're just sort of uh, biking it to the location where they're oh. going to put everything together. Hmm. They only achieved what they did through hard work and a lot of practice. A good way to practice actively, though, is through Brilliant.org. Even though rocketry is complex, all it takes is for you to start small in order to achieve great things. ISRO knows at the very beginning that if it were to build huge rockets like Saturn V, it won't work. It has to start with something Baby manageable steps. like the satellite launch vehicles in work order to slowly up. become a giant it is now. In a similar way, Brilliant helps you start small with interesting problems and examples so that you can master concepts by solving fun. I think we could probably use a bit of this. Yourselves. On top of that, it also this gives is like you a, a good framework website for yeah. understanding of courses and help you link relevant to become smarter together. if you love this video i recommend you to start with the courses on because it's really mechanics crazy stuff astronomy. is it free start courses achieve great imagine go to sponsored i think slash curious elephant and sign up for free 
oh. first 200 people click on the link will also get 20 percent off the annual oh. premium subscription premium. all right oh, that's, that's about it cool thank you all so much for watching <laughs> don't forget to follow me at lay creatives on twitter and instagram as always i'm lay i'll catch you guys later i'm kind of curious to see what year this was made in because i feel so, like it was maybe made just a well, little bit ago shout out the channel okay, 2018 curious elephant mm -hmm. well that was a lot of fun has something happened since 2018 has there been another launch i seem to because i've got some indian friends of course mm -hmm. and i remember them expressing some pride over a launch um and uh mm -hmm. i i, I I swear that would have happened subsequent to this video. So you guys are going to have to fill us in on that information. Once again, a big shout out to uh, the sponsor of this episode. Um, Pratik Dio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pratik Dio. Thank you so much for the donation. Uh, you know, we really enjoy reacting to stuff, but there is a cost when it comes to this sort of stuff. So every dollar counts. We really appreciate that. And if you guys want to keep seeing us react to stuff like this, well, then we're going to ask you to click that subscribe button. Click the little bell icon. Choose all from the drop down menu so you can get updated every, every time, time we upload a new video. video. If you're just video, please let us know by clicking the thumbs up button and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Keep That's sending right. stuff to iratesubtitles at gmail.com. And we got a subreddit and so you guys can join the IRH family at reddit.com forward slash r forward slash internet rabbit hole. And uh, if you want to be like this guy, send us a few bucks. This is Internet Rabbit Hole Daily. I already signed up. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, guys.